Is it not also true that there are much problems and challenges in the world these days? From countries beyond our shores to that within this country of Australia, within our state, within our community, our neighbourhoods, <coughs> there are many, many problems and issues. I think recently, whether in, in terms of social problems, that of the number of cases of violence, um, crimes that have been committed, I mean here, even in the neighbourhood itself, I mean, within our community here, we have already known of cases right, of um, uh, house invasion, etc. Many, many problems. And I do not actually watch a lot of news these days. Uh, we don't really have a TV at our home, okay? But I do read some news on the internet. Um, and but many a times, uh, you have to admit when you read the news that's out there. A lot of them are bad. And sometimes I would say it's not even bad, it's totally ugly, even. And they can really make one's, one depressed. And I think that's why some people say don't read the news these days, right? Read the word of God, the good news. And I think that's true. But besides all this sad happening that's around the world, news that's out there, What is actually really also happening in the world around us? Our world, in a way, you know, where you are in it. And we know many people, they are facing difficult circumstances and challenges. And these challenges can be related to finance, health, work, relationships, etc. Mental health issues are at an all-time high. And recently I read and heard that the suicide rate even among young people have increased year after year. So how is one able to face such challenges and difficulties? I was provided an article, and first I must state it's a secular one. Okay, it's a secular article, not a Christian one. And this article was talking about the power of living with gratitude. In this article, it encourages people to thank you, and what it says, to say thank you, and to say thank you to the universe. Okay, and I guess you can understand why it is secular. And it states in one of the sections, trying to bring out the signs behind it, that is when a person expresses gratitude, our brain, okay, our brain will release a chemical or some sort of transmitters. Two of them which are responsible for our emotions. And these transmitters enhance our mood immediately, making us feel happy inside. So the article is really trying to say to focus on the positive aspects of life and be thankful for them. It's about saying thank you, and this is what the article say, for the strength to endure. Okay, but wherever that strength is from, for the support around us, and for the hope of better days. Just hope, just hope that the days will be better, is what he's trying to say. And following this line of thinking, okay, I was given this poem by my wife. Uh, she's the more poetic one, I, I'm not. But I thought this poem was really, really good in a way, and it's bringing out what this whole positive thinking is about. And I'll read it to you, and it's by Nancy Kamodi. This is what she writes. I'm thankful for the mess to clean after a party, because it means I have been surrounded by friends. I'm thankful for the taxes I pay, because it means I'm employed. Well, this one's really hard to Swallow up. This is what it says. Right, our text is coming up soon. Right, July. Maybe this one is for the next one is for the ladies. I'm thankful for the clothes that fit that fit a little too tight because it means I have enough to eat. I'm thankful for a lawn that needs mowing 
windows that need cleaning, and gutters that need fixing, because it means I have a home. I'm thankful for the spot I find at the far end of the parking lot, because it means I'm capable of walking. This is one I add for the youth that's in our meets. I'm thankful for homework. I'm thankful for studies. Because this means I have a brain to think. This one may be pertaining to us here. I'm thankful for the man behind me in church who sings off key because it means that I can hear. This one maybe for the mothers. I'm thankful for the piles of laundry and ironing because it means my loved ones are nearby. And finally, I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off in the early morning hours because it means that I'm alive. To summarize the article and this poem to a certain degree or maybe a large degree, they were all promoting having a mindset of being thankful. And having such a thankful mindset is good and can be helpful, no doubt. But importantly, if one was to consider a bit more, and that's what I would like you to do, not only do we question and have to question what or whom are we thanking, right? In the articles to thank the universe, we are also to ask on what basis was this thanking founded on? What kind of hope or better days are they yearning? The hope, just hope, just hope it be better, just hope it be better tomorrow. And then consider the focus of the thanksgiving that was in the poem or in what was being said in the article. And it is on this last point, the focus of thanksgiving, will today's sermon be concentrating on. Today we continue and I continue our sermon series from the book of Colossians. About a month back, we started on this series. We are going and we went through, starting off in verse 1 and 2 of Colossians. And you can turn to your Bible and uh, Colossians. If you do not know where Colossians is in the New Testament, and I always find Colossians using this acronym that um, is kind of an acronym, uh, saying that helps me find girl eat popcorn. You know girl eat popcorn? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So if you can't remember, just remember girl eat popcorn. That's that it has stuck in my head for the last 30 years. Taught by my Sunday school teacher. Alright, you can turn to Colossians and about a month back, we were going, or I went through starting verses 1 to 2. And that was Paul's greeting to a church. To the church in Colossae. And it was a letter to them. Alright, it was a letter to them because the church itself was facing some issues. And as we go through uh, this series, we'll learn about what Paul teaches. How do you cope with this issue that the church was facing? And that was you know, about legalism itself. In a short greeting, we unpack how Paul humbly viewed himself as a servant of Christ, as a messenger of Christ, and what it means for us to be known as saints. Right? The saints, the one that are set apart, the one who are made holy and faithful believers of Christ. In the sermon today, we will continue and we'll see Paul's prayer for the Church of Colossae, or in short, the Colossians. And this prayer of this prayer that Paul has actually goes on from verse 3 all the way to verse 23. The chapter 1, verse 3 to 23 is Paul's prayer. It starts off with what I term as the prayer of thanksgiving. And this will be today's sermon passage from verse 3 to verse 8. Okay, the prayer of thanksgiving. This passage will show that Paul's prayer of thanksgiving goes beyond thanking God about one's own situation and the blessing of oneself that he or she has received from God. 
it is unlike what has been mentioned in the secular article of thanksgiving or the poem where the focus of thanksgiving is very much on oneself think positively of what is happening to you yourself your life but it can be this prayer of thanksgiving a thanksgiving for others as well and it is to be christ-centered and in other words gospel-centered this is something i believe many christians tend not to see or possibly neglect thus today's sermon title the gospel focused thanksgiving in this sermon we will look at four points today instead of three there will be four prayer of thanksgiving object of thanksgiving reason for thanksgiving and cause for thanksgiving and from these four points i hope that we all can learn that gospel focused thanksgiving is about christ it's about the gospel it's about others so now let us read colossians chapter 1 verse 3 to 8 and you can read it along with me as i'll read it aloud we always thank god the father of the lord jesus christ when we pray for you since we heard of your faith in christ jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid out for you in heaven of this you have heard before in the word of the truth the gospel which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing as he also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of god in truth just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant he is a faithful master of christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the spirit this is the word of god let us pray <coughs> almighty god our heavenly father lord we come before you this morning committing ourselves committing this time and committing the word that has been read and is about to be shared into your hands lord we pray that your word will indeed go forth and will not return to you Lord. that your word will go forth to transform the hearts of the people that hears and listen that your word will transform not only our minds but our heart our whole being we commit this time into your hands i commit myself into your hands in jesus christ's name we pray amen prayer of thanksgiving being thankful for being thankful for christian is not a mindset thing it can be and quite a number of us may think so too however i would say being thankful for a christian is not something we just tell or train our minds to do i would say that we as christians can be thankful flows from the relationship with god i repeat i will say that we as christians can be thankful flows from the relationship we have with god we do not say thank you to the universe or the thing air we say thank you to the creator of the universe the creator of you and of me god is not impersonal he is our father in heaven that is how our lord jesus christ taught his disciples to address God when they pray. And this is what Paul himself also says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We always thank God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is worth mentioning here that praying is more than asking for things. God is not a genie in a jar that you will rub only when you are in need. 
Paul prayed and said, we always thank God. And when they pray for the saints in Colossae, they always give thanks for them, for the Colossians, for the church there. They do not just petition God for the Colossians. Here Paul shows that thanksgiving is very much a part of prayer and possibly to be placed ahead of the other aspects of petition and requesting. Then do we start off with our prayer with thanksgiving to the Lord? Or do we just only come to God asking Him for things? And very much, thanksgiving is to be a part of prayer. Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, one of my favorite verses that I remember, and it states, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. At our recent Wednesday night prayer meeting, just a few days ago, I mentioned while leading devotion from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. And that is also written by Paul in his episode. And specifically on verse 18, he writes, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. The all prayer speaks of a variety, or rather you can say types, or aspects of prayer. Following an acronym that I learned in my Sunday school days, and this acronym is the word X. A-C-T-S It tells us that prayer has the aspect of adoration A for adoration When you pray to God you can adore God you can praise God praise Him for who He is just as we sing in the songs here praising His name do that in prayer C stands for confession Prayer of confession, coming to the Lord, confessing to Him your sins. Sins of commission, which means sins that we have committed. And even sins of omission, which means sins that we have not done what God <coughs> wants us to do. We have omitted it. Confess it to the Lord. Confess your fears to the Lord. Confess even and or lament to Him pains or struggles that you have. That can be part of prayer. T is thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Prayer of thanksgiving. Thank the Lord. Truly. And S. Supplication. Prayer of supplication or petition. When you come before the Lord, petitioning Him. Asking him, God, it is in your will, let this be done. However, we tend to pray only when in trouble. And when we pray, our prayer tends to be only focusing on petition and request for our needs or wants. Brothers and sisters in Christ, remember, prayer is very much a time of communication with God. Our Father in Heaven. It's a talk. It's a communicating with God. And He is speaking also to us through prayer. And let thanksgiving be a part of it. And a very big part of it. For truly, there is much to thank God for. This thanksgiving heart of Paul the Apostle, derived from his relationship with God, is evident here, in this passage and actually found throughout the whole letter of Colossians in actually in every chapter you will see this thanksgiving here in this passage chapter 1 3 to 8 and just to mention maybe you can take note those of you where the Bibles open there is chapter 2 verse 7 chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 chapter 4 verse 2 and as I go through this series of Colossians and we read through all these passages, we will come back 
to this word of thanksgiving. So Paul has a heart of thanksgiving, but what or whom was he thankful for in his prayer? The object of thanksgiving. Who was Paul thanking God for? We always thank God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. That's what Paul wrote. And so the simple answer would be for the Colossians in the church of Colossae. However, Paul did go on to state who they were. And specifically, he did that in how he was thankful for the saints and he describes this saints in verse 4 to 5. Paul was thankful for God or rather thankful to God for the saints who has faith in Christ Jesus. These were the ones he was thanking God for. Faith in Christ Jesus. But what does that mean? Faith that Christ is God, Saviour and King. Faith that Christ Jesus is the Son of God. He has died for our sins in our place and through Him and only Him are we reconciled with God. Faith that Christ is truly our Saviour. He has died on the cross. Has, he has resurrected from the dead, conquered death and now sits at the right hand of God. Faith that Christ is King of our lives. He has redeemed us. He has given us new life. And He will come again to restore and establish His kingdom forever. And, good. and Paul went on also to state that he, these are saints who has not only faith in Jesus Christ, but has love for others. Love for the other saints. And this love is the result of salvation. This is the result of being born again. The love for others and for other saints is evidence of the full of the fruit of salvation. Jesus himself says in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. This is what Jesus himself says. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And the Apostle John in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18 went on to be even more specific of what this love, this Christian love, looks like. And this is what he records and says in 1 John 3, 16-18. By this we know love, that he, and who is this he? Christ Jesus, laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters of Christ. And who are these brothers and sisters of Christ? The saints. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. More can certainly be said and taught about this aspect and this topic of Christian love. And we should have and we could have one, but then it will be for another day. However, I think an important our side point, but one to note, is that this love that the saint has is a supernatural love. It's a love that comes from Christ, or in Christ is how we put it, and has been modeled by Him. And now it is supposed to be what we are to do to love one another. So besides the saints who has this faith and who has love for fellow saints, the saints also have a hope laid up for them in heaven. The New Testament word hope 
contains no uncertainty, unlike the English word hope. Right? I'll repeat that. The New Testament word that you find in the Bible, hope, contains no uncertainty, unlike the English word hope. Many a times, like in the secular article I mentioned, the hope is just, just hope. Just hope for the best. There is a certain element of uncertainty. You can just hope. But the Christian hope is certain. It speaks of something certain, but yet to be realized. And this hope of certainty, but yet to be realized, is that of the ultimate destiny where we will share in the glory and relationship we have with God our Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit. This hope is secure. This hope is certain because of Christ Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord, for what He has done. And He will do again when He comes back. And for such a saint with faith, with love for fellow saints, and the hope that is certain, that's for sure, laid up in heaven, Paul gave thanks. And we can too. For myself, I give thanks for Win Life Church, for the saints here. I've not only heard, but I've seen the faith that you have. I've met brothers and sisters in Christ here who are facing struggles and challenges in life, in terms of health, that we know people are sick and some are human, that are chronic, continuous. We have met people who are in financi financial situations, having difficulty to make ends meet, job situation. Some have lost jobs, they are tough, it's been difficult to find situations in family. And one other common topic they are here often also is like visa issues. These are challenges. Yet, I see the faith you have in God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The perseverance to continue to trust and obey. That you continue to praise God and give thanks to Him. And I thank God for that. And I praise God for that. I see the love you have for each other. The concern and the service given to one another. From the serving of coffee and food, to the cleaning up after, the offering to drive others from train station to the church, and the church back to train station and other places, to their homes, the offering of physical help, coming to the church as a working bee to help. My family and I have also experienced this love. We give thanks to God for each one of you, brothers and sisters in Christ here, who have been earnestly praying for us, for our relocation here, and, have, and showing great concerns for us. And we give thanks for that. People who have much wanted to even offer their homes for us to stay in. But the problem is, my family is just too big. <laughs> right? And that's a truth. But we are so thankful just for the heart for one thing that you know we could to offer a place for you to come to stay. There's an offer to help, to look out for homes for us to buy, or whatever they could do. Offers of giving us a boxer so that we can pack, and more so even to that after we have moved to be here to help us unpack. So although me, my family, we have yet to find a place and we are still kind of stuck in this transition. It's not very desirable, sometimes it's so frustrating. But like Paul, I would say, I always give thanks to God for the saints at being life. And I would like to say, I would like to take this opportunity to also thank you all for your care, concern and assistance offered. And may you do so and continue to do so for all the congregants here in Main Life Church. Moving on. Reason for Thanksgiving. 
I would say Paul nicely places the reason for thanksgiving for the saints in verses 5 to 6, or rather the second part of, verses, of, the, of verse 5, all the way to verse 6. And I'll read. Of these you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Here, Paul is stating that the reason for his thanksgiving, for the thanksgiving that they are praying for the Colossian church, is the gospel. You hear this word gospel used quite frequently. (coughs) What is the gospel? The gospel as translated from Greek simply means good news. And it's good news when we understand the bad news. And the bad news is that we have sinned and rebelled against God, our Creator, and we do not and cannot earn our salvation by our own means, our works, and we are condemned. That's the bad news. Only when you realize the bad news, therefore, you will now know why what I'm going to say is the good news. And this is the good news. The work of redemption that has been completed by and only through Jesus Christ, our Lord, finished on the cross. Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the one who knew no sin, and had no sin for the punishment for our sins on our behalf. The gospel is also the good news and is the good news that those who are in Christ Jesus are no longer in chains bounded by sins. We have new life. Summarizing, in a way, the gospel is the good news that we who were once enemies of God have been reconciled by the blood of his son Jesus Christ and adopted into the family of God. Thus, at the core, the gospel is the reason for thanksgiving for the saints. For it is through the preaching and hearing of the gospel that we become believers, that we become saints. The gospel is the reason for the faith, for the love, for the hope we have in Christ Jesus. The gospel has the power to transform lives because Christ is in each of his believers through the Holy Spirit that is producing fruit, fruit of the Spirit. It is bearing fruit, bearing the fruit of love. And the fruit of the Spirit, as what has been stated by Paul in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. There is no law needed for this kind of fruit, for this kind of character in Christians. But it comes through the gospel. The gospel is not only bearing fruit in you, it is also increasing in you. The gospel is not only spreading and increasing in the whole world, it is spreading and growing in you. The gospel is victory over Satan, sin and death. Christ Jesus has conquered sin and death. The victory is won or confirmed. However, we are still in what is termed as the already but not yet period. Though the victory is confirmed, Christ's kingdom has not been fully restored and we are awaiting his return. So the gospel increasing is you, is Christ having increasing victory in us, his believers and that we are being sanctified. We are being transformed 
day by day. The gospel is increasing in you. It is overcoming and having the victory over your old self. So that your new self becomes more and more in you. And you are becoming more and more like the followers of Christ. And like Christ. This is a continual process until we see Christ again. In the last portion of verse 6, Paul also reminded the Colossians and us that the gospel is by the grace of God. This is what he said. He stated, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God. And this is very important for this speaks against and against and is in opposed to legalism doctrines threatening the church of Colossae then and actually even for us today. This problem still continues. In a commentary of an NIV study Bible, which I came across, and I will quote, because this is what it talks about. The emphasis of thanksgiving, as you see in this uh, Paul's letter and, in, and what we are talking about in today's passage. So the emphasis of thanksgiving is a powerful antidote to legalism. While legalism motivates people to serve and obey God in order to get some reward from God, thanksgiving motivates people to serve and obey God because of the enormous gift we have already received. Unquote. And here we see Paul giving thanks to or giving thanks for the gospel. What the gospel is doing in the same and it is the grace of God. But truly, we can give thanks for the gospel. That is the reason for thanksgiving. Finally, cause for thanksgiving. I believe Paul, as he writes on, indirectly also gives thanks. And he is thanking Epaphras, whom he calls our beloved fellow servant and faithful minister in verse 7 and 8. Paul recognized him as the one whom, and most likely is the one who has preached and taught the gospel to the Colossians. In verse 7, he states, just, and he's writing to the Colossian church, just as you learn it from Epaphras. And Epaphras likely heard the gospel from Paul. It is believed that Epaphras became a believer himself when he traveled to Ephesus. And Ephesus was about 170 kilometers away from Colossae. And at Ephesus, at, at Ephesus Paul was preaching and teaching. And Paul was there for about two years when he set up the church there. And then Epaphras then took the gospel, the good news, back to his hometown of Colossae and shared it. He, Epaphras, in my terms, became the cause of the thanksgiving, that Paul was giving thanks for the saints in the church of Colossae. Faithful sharing, preaching, teaching of the gospel or Epaphras led the people in Colossae to faith. Paul himself acknowledges the role that believers play in the sharing and teaching of the gospel. He writes in Romans 10, verse 14 to 15, he wrote, and I read, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. We may not all be called to preach the gospel from the pulpit or be full-time evangelists 
or missionaries. But we are all certainly called to be witnesses for Christ, to share our testimony of Christ Jesus, what the Lord is doing and has done in our lives. From today's sermon, I hope we can see that a prayer of thanksgiving for us Christians is not about positive thinking and not about just about one's circumstance. It's not focused on oneself. We do thank God for His blessings on us and we can and should count our blessings, both big and small, to be thankful and to have a heart of gratitude. But the thankfulness we see of Paul in this sermon passage goes beyond himself. It is worth mentioning that as Paul wrote this letter to the Colossians, to the church in Colossae, he was in prison. His life was in danger. Yet Paul's focus was not on his circumstance, not on, nor himself. Paul's thankfulness was others was others oriented and focused on the gospel. His thankfulness was built on what the cause, what the gospel was and is still doing today. So in whatever circumstance we may be in this day or the days ahead, let us continue to be thankful. Let us be thankful for the fellow saints that God has placed us here in this church. Thankful for the faith we have and the faith that our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ have in Christ Jesus. Let us continue to encourage each other to hold on to the faith and hope we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us love one another, not in words and talk, but in deed and truth. Let us love just as Christ has loved us. May we also in our prayers be thankful, like Paul the Apostle, for the Gospel's work. Being thankful for the Gospel, the good news that brings salvation and restoration and transformation for the believers. Praying and thanking God for the power of the Gospel that is producing fruit in the lives of the believers and that it will be increasing each day in each one of us. Let us pray in thanksgiving that the gospel be working in ourselves that we too may be transformed to be more and more like Christ. And may we also be thankful for the messengers of the gospel. Be thankful for preachers and teachers of the good news. Thankful for pastors and evangelists. Be thankful for those who continue to be witnesses for Christ even in areas and countries that are closed up to the gospel. May we be thankful and pray that each of us can be used also to be God's messenger. God, God wants to use you to be His witness and you can be that witness and messenger for Him. To your friends, to your colleagues, to your loved ones, to your children, and even to strangers. For those of us who have yet to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour, we are thankful that you are here today, and we are thankful that you have heard the Gospel preached. The Gospel is good news, and as I have already shared, but my appeal to you this day is that you may receive this good news this very day. Believe in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Do not delay any longer. We will all want to share in the rejoicing and thankfulness of God's grace for you. Confess your sins, your rebellion against God and ask God for His forgiveness in the name of of His Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Before I close in prayer, I would like each one of us to spend some time 
considering the things we can thank God for. How we can be thankful for Pharaoh's sins and for the gospel. So in the next couple of minutes, I would like you to think about these things. Things to thank God for and commit them to God in thanksgiving. After which, I will pray and invite the music and praise team up to lead us in a closing song. Now let us spend a minute or two. Close our eyes and think of what you can thank God. <coughs> Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege of prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for your grace of salvation for us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this family of believers that you have given us, for the faith in Christ Jesus for the love we can have for one another. Thank you, God, for the hope we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. This hope that is certain and secure. Lord, we can thank you, and we can thank you for others, even the circumstance, regardless of how it is that we will are in. No matter what the problems that we are facing, Lord, we can give thanks. And truly give us a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of gratitude. Because everything here is temporal. And yet the hope that you have given us is glorious and eternal. And Lord, we are thankful for that. So again, O oh Lord, we are thankful for this time. We are thankful for this opportunity you have given each one of us that we can hear the word of truth shared. Truly give us a heart of thankfulness this day. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.